So legislative power is vested in Congress. And take note, our Congress has two chambers, the Senate and the House of, the, uh, House of Representatives. Okay? <laughs> so take note of the qualifications of the Senator. Ba't pa kayo magbabar? Pwede naman palang able to read and write. Mag-senador na kayo, huwag na kayo magbar. <laughs> Tapos na ang filing. Eh? So what about the members of Congress? Oh, mag-congressman na lang kayo, huwag na kayo magbar. Able to read and write lang yan. Okay? Now, what about term compared to tenure? Yung term, ito yung actual length when a person can occupy the position. Like for example, a mayor or oh, three years. That's the term. Tenure is actually the length of time you occupy the position. Kasi tulad ni President Erap, hindi ba? Oh, ang kanyang term of office ay six years under Article 7, Section 4. Pero after two years, natapos na siya. So yun yung kanyang tenure. Okay? Under our constitution, we have district representatives elected from the different districts in the provinces, cities, and Metro Manila area. Now, may a local legislative body like ARMM na ngayon ay BARM create a congressional district? The answer is no. The spring cannot go beyond its source. ARMM or BARM right now is a creation of Congress. It cannot create a congressional office. Kasi yung ARMM nag-create ng Sharif Kabunsuan as a province. E pag probinsya ka under the constitution, meron niyang congressional representation. O magkakaroon ng congressman. E hindi po pwede yan. Ha? So a legislative assembly, local legislative body cannot create a province, cannot create a legislative district. Only Congress can do that. And take note of gerrymandering. Ano? Ayan. Baka pinag-break tayo. Ayan. Yung ano ba itong gerrymandering? Galing ito doon sa pangalan ni Elbridge Jerry na dating governor ng uh, Massachusetts. Ha? Na, nandyan ang Boston Celtics. <laughs> okay. So, very district yung Massachusetts to favor his party mates. Okay? Nung tinignan ng isang reporter, ang itsura parang salamander. Pero sabi nitong reporter ng Boston Gazette, it looks like gerrymander to me. So kaya doon nagsimula ang gerrymandering. Now, in the case of Navarro versus Executive Secretary, is the creation of the Nagat Islands. Ako, panalangin po natin yung mga kababayan natin sa Dinagat Islands. Ha? Isa ito sa mga nabiktima talaga ng bagyo. And the Republic Act 9355, gerrymandering, ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, hindi naman. Gerrymandering is a term employed to describe an apportionment of representative districts so contrived so as to give an unfair advantage to the party in power. Hindi manalo yung kakampi mo kaya nag-create ka ng bagong distrito para doon siya tumakbo, ay di mananalo siya doon. O oh, yan. We also have party list representatives. Ang party list ay under section 5, paragraph 2, of Article 6. Diba? So, nandyan yung, ito yung party list na itatayo ko. Eh, no? Kasi, bawal ang sector ng mga lalaki. Wala. Oh. Ang daming sector dyan. Walang men or male sector. Except religious sector. So, magtatayo tayo ng uhaw. Union, union of husbands afraid of their wives. <laughs> Kaya lang baka ma-disqualify ako. I do not belong to that sector. So, under Republic Act 7941, 20% allocation in the total number of seats in Congress. Eh? Only the parties who garnered at least 2% of the vote shall be given a guaranteed seat. And for proportional representation, tatlo lang ang maximum number of seats. There are also disqualified party lists under 7941. Tingnan nyo na lang. Now, in the case of Veterans Federation versus Comelec, 20% allocation. That was the ceiling following the so-called panganiban formula. Okay? And 2% threshold. So only the party list who garnered at least 2% of the votes for the party list would be given a seat. Three seats limit and proportional representation. However, in the case of Panat versus Comelec, Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, you need to fill up the 
hindi po pwedeng hindi ma-fill up yan at any given election. Kala ko ba siling lang? That was before. But in the ruling in Banat, the 20% allocation must be filled up. Okay? E eh, paano yon? So ganito, nagkakaroon ng three rounds dyan ha, to simplify. First round ng mga party list, kumilik ang gagawa, lahat na naka 2% may one seat. Those who garnered more than 2% of the votes, extra seats. Up to three. So three ang total. Ha? Dalawa na lang ang pwedeng extra. Now, assuming may natira pang sampung seats, ay eh, wala nang naka 2%. Sa Veterans Federation, okay na yon. Hindi na natin i-fill up. But in the ruling in Banat, kailangan nating i-fill up yon, kaya irarang mo yung mga remaining party list even with votes less than 2%. At yung first 10 in the ranking will be given one seat in Congress. OMG. So ang dali ngayon maging uh, congressman by a party list. Yes, that is the effect of the ruling. Okay? Now, in the case of atong paglaom versus Comelec, There are three different party lists. Eh? National, regional, sectoral. Now, dati ang political party hindi pwedeng sumali. But a political party can now participate in the party list provided they register under the party list and do not field candidates in legislative election. However, kahit nag-participate sila sa legislative district, yung kanilang sectoral wing Like for example, yung PDP laban youth sector. O pwede mag-party list yun. OMG. <laughs> so ang dali, di ba? Now, if you are a member of Congress, you are free from arrest. Take note of the requirements of Section 11. The offense is punishable by less than six years imprisonment and Congress is in session. Therefore, yung request ni Congressman ay hindi pwedeng pagbigyan kasi ang kaso niya ay statutory rate more than six years ang penalty of imprisonment. Members of Congress are not imp impeachable officials. But how do we remove them if they misbehave? If they committed violations? They can be suspended or removed through the votes of two-thirds of all the members of that chamber dahil ang gagawa niya yung kanilang ethics committee. Eh? The Ethics Committee of its House. Okay? Take note also of the concept of incompatible office. That a member of Congress may not hold any other employment in the government without forfeiting his seat during his term. So, ito bang chairman ng Red Cross ay mayroong incompatible office dahil senador siya. Ang sagot, Liban versus Gordon, hindi. Because Red Cross is not a government office. Okay? However, pinagre-report siya ng presidente at ipapa-audit siya. Pwede yun under the amended law, Republic Act 10,072. Okay? Red Cross is a private organization. Established siya ni Henry Dunan. Okay? Now, what about a forbidden office? Under Section 13, a member of Congress may not be appointed to any office created or the emoluments thereof increased during his term for which he was elected. Bakit? E gagawa ka ng opisina, tapos later on ikaw mag-o-occupy. Even if you give up your congressional seat, that is not allowed. Kaya nga, forbidden office. A member of Congress must avoid conflict of interest, especially when it comes to financial matters. And there is that electoral tribunal in each house which is the sole judge in all contests relating to qualification of its member. How does one became, become a member of Congress after he is proclaimed after the election? So in other words, post-proclamation controversy. Prior to proclamation, komelek pa yan. Okay? Now, There are inquiries in aid of re-election. I mean, in aid of legislation. Ginagawa yan. That is a plenary power of Congress. The Senate, the House, and the respective uh, committees may conduct investigations in aid of legislation. And the President cannot prohibit 
Senate versus Ermita, panahon pa ni Gloria Arroyo, pinagbawalan niya yung mga cabinet members niya, sabi ng Korte Suprema, hindi pwede. However, Congress must observe certain limitations that the investigation must be done in aid of re-election, I mean in aid of legislation, and they have to publish the rules. The rights of the person appearing must be respected. Diba? Kaya nga, ini-invoke nila yung right to self-incrimination. Mali yun eh. Right against self-incrimination. Okay? However, in Section 22 of Article 6, dito pwedeng may say dito ang Presidente ng Pilipinas. Kasi ito yung question hour. According to the Supreme Court, Senate versus Ermita, magkaiba yung Section 21 at Section 22. Okay? Although closely related, but they're different. Yung isa ay question hour in pursuit of Congress oversight function. In other words, may say ang presidente kasi magsasubmit pa nga ng questions dyan, di ba? Three days before to the Senate President and to the uh, Speaker of the House. Now, when Congress legislates one title, one subject, para hindi magkakaroon ng mga unrelated provisions. However, the title of the bill is not required to be an index to the body of the act. Na hindi ganun ka-comprehensive ano, para ilagay na lahat ng detalye. And take note also that there are bills that must or, uh, originate from the House of Representatives, particularly tax measures, measures increasing public debt, etc. But the Senate may propose or concur with amendments. Okay, but do not be misled. Eh? They are co-equal chambers. Walang mas mataas ay isa't isa dyan. Kaya nga, erroneous to say na lower house and upper house, no. Kaya lang upper house yan sa Amerika. Yung Senate nasa taas, yung house nasa baba. Ay sa atin hindi po pwede yan. Mas mataas ang uh, Quezon City kaya sa Pasay. Ha? Nandun ang Senado sa Pasay. Okay, so, before a bill becomes a law, it must pass through three readings. Done on separate days. Anong purpose? Sabi ng Korte, to inform the members of Congress of what they must vote on. Kasi marami dyan laging absent. <laughs> At number one yata, ayon sa record, si Manny Pacquiao laging absent. Ha? Pero kung gusto niya raw ng matinong, matinong gobyerno at masolve na ang crisis na ito, i-voto niya si Pacquiao kasi siya ang vaccine champion. So wala tayong problema sa vaccine. <laughs> Nasasama yata si Yorme, pero pangit ang mangyayari. No? Pacquiao, Yorme, Pacquiao, naku, delikado. <laughs> Oo. Diba? Pero ang gusto ko talaga yan, si Grace po at saka si Kiko Pangilina, kung magsasama sana, maganda yan. Po, Kiko tayo. And to give them notice that a measure is progressing. Ha? Kasi kung may objection ka, mag-object ka na. Hindi yung naipasa yung batas, tapos saka mag-o-object, naipasa na. Diba? At tulad ng anti-terrorism law, naku, marami nagmamagaling ngayon. Diba? Pero nasaan sila, ano nagde-debate para dyan sa anti-terrorism law na yan. Okay? The President may veto a bill. Kaya lang, pag binito niya, ibalik niya sa House of Origin. And Congress can bypass the veto power of the President by a two-thirds vote of the members of the of both chambers. Diba? Kasi ipapasa pa rin naman yan doon sa kabila. Now, when the President does not sign the bill, he does not veto a bill, after 30 days, it becomes a law, as if he signed it. So maraming ganyan, naglaps yan through presidential inaction. Now what about the inappropriate provision? Ha? Misa kala natin, inappropriate, tulad ng joke na yan. Ano? Pero hindi naman pala, nasa isip lang pala yung inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate provisions according to the court means that Congress cannot include in a general appropriations bill, pag appropriation kasi budget yan eh, matters that should be more properly enacted in a separate legislation. Huwag mo na isama. Diba? And if does it does that, the inappropriate provision inserted by it must be treated as item which the president can veto. The so-called item veto. And Congress has the power to declare war under Section 23 uh, of Article 6. Okay? Now, the president, according to the Supreme Court, The executive power is vested in the president. That means the president of the Philippines is the executive of uh, the government of the Philippines and no other, natural. Diba? And take note of the qualification. Eh? 
Oh, tumakbo nila kay presidente, wala kay magbar. Able to read and write lang. The president and the vice president have the same qualifications. Ba? Oh, iba pa lang vice yan. Ito yung vice. Ayan. Why? Kasi, alam nyo, sa Pilipinas, ang vice president is just one step from the presidency. At wala siyang trabaho. Kaya huwag nyo sisihin si Lenny Robredo kung wala siyang trabaho. Wala ba talaga? Ang dami niya kayong ginagawa. Pero wala siyang trabaho sa Constitution. Unless, i-appoint siya ng Pangulo sa anumang posisyon. Pero kung ayaw siyang i-appoint ng Pangulo, wala tayong magagawa doon. Hindi katulad sa Amerika na ang Vice President ng Amerika may trabaho. He is the presiding officer of the American Senate. O kung di nyo pa nalalaman yan, yan ang katotohanan. Kaya walang Senate President ang Amerika. Kaya ang mga na oposisyon doon nasa House at yung mga senador, most probably, they are always persuaded by the presiding officer, the vice president. Okay? Kaya talaga may check and balance sila. E sa atin, walang trabaho ang vice president, kundi manalangin gabi-gabi. Na kinabukasan, ay maayos na ang bayan. Ayun naman, iba na iisip nyo. <laughs> okay? So, six years without re-election, pwede bang tumakbong vice president ang dati ng presidente? Ang sagot, There is no specific prohibition in the Constitution. Why? Probably, I could just surmise, I could just guess, because the framers of the Constitution were thinking that no one was already occupied the highest position of the land would go to a lower position. Ay, mali po kayo. May presidente gusto mag-congresswoman. Diba? Diba? Edi, pwede rin siguro na yung vice president, ay, yung presidente tumakbong vice. Ay, pero alam nyo, the evil sought to be avoided would be neglected, would be set aside if we allow a president, former president, to run as vice president. Kasi magiging presidente siya uli. Oh. Diba? Now, if there are contests regarding elections of president and vice president, you go to the presidential electoral tribunal. It is the Supreme Court and Bank. Take note, sitting and Bank. Okay. Now, in the case of Poe versus Arroyo, di ba? Dahil na matay itong si Fernando Poe Jr. Pero kino contest niya yung panalo ni Gloria Arroyo. Yaya sabi nung kanyang asawa si Susan Roses, you have stolen the presidency not once but twice. Talaga may likas sa Koreano. Okay, pagi maraming Koreano sa gobyerno. Pag may project, magkano Korean? Paano Korean? O, di ba? Ngayon, sabi ni Susan Roses, dahil lamatay yung asawa niya, pwede ba na ako ang magtuloy? Sabi ng korte, wala na, mutin academic na yan, dismiss na yan. Why? Eh, assuming, mapantunayan na nandaya si Gloria Arroyo. Eh, sinong upo? Ikaw? O, hindi naman po pwede porque absolute community of property. Yung wife ang upapalit doon sa kanyang asawa. O, doon nangyayari sa politika yan. Okay. <laughs> wala naman dynasty. Di ba? Kaya lang, ang problema, walang right si Susan Roses na iporso ito dahil hindi naman siya makikinabang eh. She is not a proper party. Kaya dismissed. Okay? Take note of the presidential succession, ha? Wala dyan yung uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice. Wala sa line of succession, ha? Aluanag yan. Section 8 ng Article 7. Now, si Erap ay nag-resign, sabi ng Korte Suprema. His presidency is now in the past tense. It's the concept of constructive resignation. Eh? Kasi umalis ka eh. Sabi niya, this is your, yung press release bago ka umalis ng Malacanang, that was your valedictory. Abay, lalo na galit sa ERAP. Tinga ako naging honorable mention, valedictorian pa. <laughs> okay, your final farewell. Kaya eh, nagkaroon ng vacancy sa vice president. So yung presidente ngayon will have to appoint select a member of Congress and that must be voted upon by the majority of the members of Congress Congress voting separately. At hindi jointly, ha? O sinabi ng Constitution, separately. Okay. Now, if ever there is a need for a special election, Section 10 of Article 6, Article 7, that's the function of Congress. Now, immunity is granted to the incumbent president. Why? ay wala na siyang aatupagin kundi yung mga demanda kung hindi siya incumbent. Okay? But such immunity can be waived according to the court. No, pwedeng i-waive yan. Yan yung panahon ni Cory Aquino. Kung gusto ng presidente na 
alisin yung kanyang waiver para siya ay maidemanda, okay lang. Now, a former president is not immune from suit. Sa AS versus Makapagal Arroyo. The immunity lasts only until the incumbency. After six years, wala ka ng immunity. So parang sa inubak lang yan. Six months ang effectivity. <laughs> After six months, wala ka ng immunity. <laughs> diba? <laughs> oh, may minagtanong kahapon. Yung bang vice president may immunity? Parang wala sa constitution eh. Diba? So there is no immunity for the vice. Okay? The president can do many, many, many things. But there are prohibitions like he may not appoint spouse or relatives with consanguinity or affinity within fourth civil degree. Bawal yun. Okay? Yung consanguinity blood relationship. Affinity by reason of marriage. Why? The rule on nepotism applies. But there, is an except, there are exceptions to the rule on nepotism under the civil service law. It does not apply to appointment of teachers, physicians, and members of the armed forces of the Philippines. Express provision of Presidential Decree 907. That's a power to appoint, and there are kinds of appointments. Regular, when Congress is in session. Okay? Ad interim, appointments made when Congress is not in session. Okay? It is deemed bypass. Through inaction and deemed disapproved by the Commission on Appointment. Take note of that. An ad interim appointment is a permanent appointment because it takes effect immediately and can no longer be withdrawn by the President. Now, yes, it is subject to the confirmation of the Commission on Appointment. Marami na appoint eh. Merong appointed son of God. Ako, gusto ko appointed grandson of God kasi baka mas magaling yung grand yun. <laughs> okay. Now what? An ad interim appointment cannot be withdrawn by the president. That's clear. But it may be rejected by the commission on appointment. So kaya kahit permanent siya, pwedeng ma-reject. How do we compare ad interim appointment against an acting appointment? Ad interim appointment must be distinguished. Why? Both are effective upon acceptance but ad interim appointment are extended while Congress is in recess, while itong acting appointment at any time, whether Congress is in session or not. Ad interim appointments are submitted to the Commission on Appointment, but acting appointments are not. Therefore, iwasan ang mga acting appointments kasi as in the past, that is subject to abuse by the appointing authority. Take note also that there are officers whose appointment must be submitted to the Commission on Appointment. You have that in Sarmiento v. Mison based on Article 7, Section 16 of your Constitution. The heads of executive departments, ambassadors and other public ministers and consuls, officers of the armed forces, from the rank of colonel or naval captain, bakit or? Kasi sa Air Force, Army, sa Marines, yan ay coronel. Ano? Pero pagdating sa Navy, naval captain ang ranggo niyan. Pareho lang naman yan. Or other ministers whose appointments are vested in him by the Constitution. Okay? However, the chief of the Philippine National Police is not subject to the confirmation by the Commission on Appointments. Wala siya doon sa listahan. Kaya Manalo versus Sistosa, hindi siya kailangan isubmit sa Commission on Disappointment. I mean, Commission on Appointments. No? There are also appointments needing prior recommendation or nomination by the Judicial and Bar Council. These are members of the Supreme Court and other lower courts and the Ombudsman and his five deputies. What about midnight appointment? You can read that in Section 15 of Article 7. Well, that the president or acting president two months immediately before the next presidential election up to the end of his term ay hindi pwedeng mag-appoint. Pinagbawalan niya ng Korte Suprema in the in the case of President Ramos. Nag-appoint siya ng judges, Judge Sua Balyarta and Valenzuela, March 30, 1998. 
eh ang election noon ay I think May, you know, 1998. Uh, May 14, 1998. Ayan daw ay questionable. Okay? At uh, hindi ito pinapayagan. However, in the case of Chief Justice Corona, February pa lang nagkakaroon na ng selection for Chief Justice. Teka muna, magre-retiro si Justice Puno. Ha? Ito ang tunay na Chief Justice. Punong mahistrado. <laughs> okay. So, magre-retiro si Chief Justice May 17, 2010. Ang election, May 10. Ay e na-appoint si Justice Corona May 12. Oh, bago pa magretiro yung justice, may nag-inappoint ka na para pinapalayas mo naman yung Chief Justice, di ba? So it was question, ba't kayo nagkakaroon ng search, ay eh wala pa namang vacancy. De Castro versus Co. Uh, JBC, sabi ng Korte Suprema, alam mo, yung prohibition sa midnight appointment ay para sa presidente yan. Nasa Article 7 yan, wala yan sa Article 8. Kasi kung gusto ng mga framers ng Constitution na pagbawalan ang presidente na mag-appoint ng mga opisyal sa Article 8 Judicial, hindi eh sana nilagay na nila yan. So what the law does not include, it excludes. Di ba? Kaya in-overturn yung ruling ng korte doon sa Valyarta and Valenzuela. Na pagka-judiciary, kahit na may prohibition on appointment because on of election ban, pwede pa rin siya mag-appoint. OMG. <laughs> Wala tayong magagawa. That's a decision of the court, the Supreme Court. Di ba? Okay. Now, the president may appoint. He may also remove the appointees. But there are exceptions because there are appointees by the president which he cannot remove. There are procedures for removing them from their office. Okay? Now, you also have the power of control. Right? Control is different from the power to create office. Control is essentially the power to alter or modify, nullify or set aside what a subordinate officer has done. Okay? And this is inherent in the executive. Why? You have that doctrine of polit qualified political agency. That all executive and administrative organizations are adjuncts to the executive department. The acts of the executive departments, when performed and promulgated in the regular course of business or unless this approved or reprobated by the chief executive, are presumably the acts of the chief executive. Okay? Now, you also have, the president also has power over the LGU. The local government units. But, Pimentel versus Aguirre, he, the president may not withhold or alter any authority or power given to the local government units by law, particularly referring to the local government code. The president also has military powers. Diba? At ano ang mga military powers niya ito? Number one, as commander-in-chief. He can call out the armed forces. He can suspend the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus. And he can declare martial law. Okay? Those are the graduated powers of the president. Now, in the case of IBP versus Zamora, the president is authorized to call out the armed forces to suppress or prevent lawless violence, invasion, or rebellion. That's why when Arab, as president at the time, called upon the Marines to assist the police in patrolling the streets of Metro Manila, that was not a violation of the Constitution on civilian supremacy, but rather it was an exercise of the calling out power of the president. Okay? Now, the president has martial law powers. Take note, when Marcos declared martial law, it was without limitations. Only the conscience of a president. Eh, paano kulang konsensya? Eh, di nagtagal ang Marcialo ng ilang taon. 1972 up to 1980 sa Metro Manila in Mindanao, in some parts of Visayas, up to 1984. Mm. Di ba? But right now, the Marcialo powers of the president are limited. Di ba? Yung grounds 
duration, not more than 60 days, and he has the duty to report to Congress. And Congress must affirm or deny the declaration of martial law. Now, in the case of Lagman versus Mitchell Day, yeah, legal ang pagdeklara ng presidente ng martial law. Kasi mayroong ground in uh, rebellion, hindi ba? Hindi naman invasion. Siguro, in-invade na tayo ng China. Congress has the prerogative to extend or uh, suspend the uh, declaration of martial law. So ang ginawa ng presidente, in-extend for about a year. Matapos yung 60-day period, in-extend niya for another one year. So ano ang ginawa ng uh, itong si Congressman Lagman? Question ito. But according to the Supreme Court, the framers of the Constitution did not put any time frame for the extension. So we, we cannot uh, say that it is also 60 days in the absence of a provision. Di sana nilagay nila kung gusto lang hanggang 60 days lang. But since there was no limitation on the period of extension, it is the president who can determine how long it will be extended provided it has the approval of Congress. And Congress approved it. Right? Oh. The president has the pardoning power. Huh? Okay? Ang pardoning power niya, kasama dyan yung pardon itself. Either plenary or absolute or conditional. And the pardon granted by Arroyo to Erap was plenary according to the court. That's why he, uh, he can run for a public office again. So kaya naging mayor pa, di ba? Bago si Yorme. However, there are limitations. Uh, inherent limitations cannot be granted in cases of impeachment. Cannot be granted in violation of election laws without favorable recommendation from the COMELEC. Can be granted only after conviction. Kaya si ERAP hindi na nag-apila at sa desisyon ng Sandigang Bayan kasi bibigyan naman pala ng pardon. Now for those who were cited in contempt in a congressional hearing, huh, the President has no power to grant them pardon. It cannot absolve the convict from civil liability, cannot restore public offices forfeited. Now, amnesty, on the other hand, is conferred by the President and confirmed by the legislature. Kailangan ito ng confirmation ng Kongreso from the Greek word amnestia, meaning forgetfulness, passing over. Amnesty is granted to political offenders. Pardon is granted to common crimes. Amnesty is granted to a class of persons. Pardon is granted to individuals. So kung binawi yung uh, amnesty kay Trillanes, dapat sa lahat ng kasama niya, binawi din. But is it valid na binawi? Well, we do not know. Kasi nasa korte pa ito. Amnesty need not be accepted. But pardon must be accepted. Amnesty requires concurrence of Congress. Pardon does not need such concurrence. Amnesty is a public act, but pardon is a private act. Now, amnesty looks backward and puts the offense into oblivion. Kinakalimutan na. But pardon looks forward and relieves the pardon of the consequences. The president also has diplomatic power. Okay? Sinabi natin diplomatic power, he can enter into treaties. However, it needs concurrence by at least two-thirds of the members of the Senate. Now, the president withdrew from the International Criminal Court. Ang ICC po mga kapatid, hindi dito pinag-uusapan ang territorial dispute ng mga archipelagic states. Ha? Yung mga territorial waters, hindi po ICC contrary dun sa pahayag ng isang presidential ball. Okay? Ang meron pong jurisdiction dyan sa mga territorial waters ay ITLOS, International Tribunal on the Laws of the Sea, based on the so-called UNCLOS, the United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. So, may mga nag-file ng petition sa Korte Suprema, Pangilinan vs. Cayetano. Kasi kapag kapapasok sa treaty ang presidente, kailangan ng concurrence ng Senado. When the president withdraws from a treaty, does he need the concurrence of the two-thirds vote of the Senate? The answer is no. According to Justice Leonin, Pangilinan vs. Cayetano, hindi kailangan ang, kongresyo, uh, ang congressional concurrence. Why? It is in the president alone because the Constitution did not provide for that. Okay? So in the absence of a constitutional provision requiring congressional or Senate's concurrence, when the president withdraws from a treaty, then we cannot impose it on the president. 
the president as a primary architect of foreign policy is subject to the constitution. E ano ba kasi ang problema kung aalis tayo sa ICC? The International Criminal Tribunal or Criminal Court, ICC, has jurisdiction over genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and aggression. These are the only crimes under the jurisdiction of the ICC under the Rome Statute. However, it can only acquire jurisdiction over the persons of the accused for these crimes if the national legislature or the national government is unwilling or unable to prosecute. Sabi ng Korte Suprema, meron tayong Republic Act 9851. We are willing and able to prosecute these crimes under our own jurisdiction so our withdrawal from the ICC is immaterial now because we can prosecute these crimes on our own. So kaya, kung yung kaso laban sa presidente na uh, crimes against humanity, uh, assuming na hindi na ipahil sa ICC, pwedeng ipahil dito sa Pilipinas under Republic Act 9851. Okay? For whatever reason, pwede yan. Now, uh, a person with proven competence integrity, probity, and independence. In the case of Republic versus Sereno, when a justice of the court does not file his salen or her salen, that affects her integrity. Therefore, she has no right to be in the judicial office. Okay? E ano ba kasi yung salen? Under Republic Act 6713, lahat po ng mga official at employees of the government must file our SALEN. E ano ba yung SALEN? Sekreto ang laman nito? Ay, hindi po. Sidelines at lagay namin? Hindi. Sa akin lahat na kapangalan. Hindi rin. Statement of Assets, Liabilities, and Net Worth. You know the purpose, di ba? Para malaman kung proportionate ba sa kanyang lifestyle yung kanyang sweldo. Okay? So, what about judicial power? Judicial power includes the duty of the courts of justice to settle actual controversies involving rights which are legally demandable and enforceable. At yung second portion, eh, that has been known as the expanded power of judicial review. Under the court's expanded jurisdiction, a petition for certiorari is a proper remedy to question the act of any branch or instrumentality of the government. Why? Eh baka merong grave abuse of discretion. Kaya nga merong kang Rule 65. Diba? Unlike our previous constitutions, the 1987 constitution is explicit in defining the scope of judicial power. And that includes any act or action of the political departments of the government for as long as there is grave abuse of discretion. E ano ba yung grave abuse of discretion? It is defined to mean a capricious or whimsical exercise of judgment that is so patent and gross as to amount to an evasion of a passive duty or a virtual refusal to perform a duty enjoined by law. Now, can the court, the Supreme Court, review impeachment cases? According to Gutierrez versus House of Representatives, yes, there are plethora of cases which the court exercised the power of judicial review on congressional action, citing the case of Santiago versus Gingona. In an earlier case of Francisco versus House of Representatives, it was expressly said by the court that impeachment proceedings are within the judicial review of the court. Okay? And take note of the judicial supremacy. That our, and under our constitutional scheme, the Supreme Court is the ultimate guardian of the Constitution. Particularly of the allocation of powers, the guarantee of individual liberties and assurance of people's sovereignty. Ika nga nila, the last bulwark of democracy, ang huling tanggula ng demokrasya. In the past, When a question is said to be a political question, the court may not interfere because it is better left to the sound judgment of the people. Anyway, in-elect nila yan. So next election, palitan nyo na lang. Ang pinapakialaman lang ng korte ay mga justiciable question. 
That is definite and concrete dispute touching on the legal relations of parties having adverse legal interest. Okay? But right now, kahit na yan ay sabihin yung political question, pag may grave abuse of discretion, you can apply, the court can apply the expanded power of judicial review and that limits the invocation by the different organs of the government of the political question doctrine. Okay? Take note of that. Now, take note also of the requisites of judicial review. There are four. That there must be an actual case or controversy raised by the proper party or local stand no? The question of constitutionality must be raised at the earliest opportunity and it must be the, the issue of constitutionality must be the very least mota or the very issue of the controversy. Okay? Now, if the case is moot and academic, the court will not uh, take it up. It will not take cognizance of a moot case. Bakit? Useless na. The thing has been accomplished. Tapos na. Di ba? Ika nga nila, punctus officio. So, ba't papakikialaman ng korte yan? And take note also of the elements of a class suit. Kasi ngayon, maraming naluloko. Alam nyo, ito yung mga tao na dapat tinatagtad ang kanilang uh, katawan ng pinumpino. Yung bang pandemic na, tapos nanluloko ka pa ng kapwa, ay mo lumaban ng parehas. Di ba? Naghahanap na matino yung mga tao, tapos lulukohin. Kagabi, di ba, may napanood ako na yung, ano ba yun? Sanla, uh, ba, uh, yung mga apartment, sinasanla. Tapos, ikaw ang kukuha ng renta, ikalukuhan pala yun. O, kasi naman, madaling mag-ingat kaysa magsisi. Yung gustong kumita ng malaki sa madaling paraan, napapahamak yan at the end. Kaya kapag ka masyado ng extravagant yung pangako, huwag nyo nang paniwalaan yan, nalukuhan na yan. Di ba? O, parang ibibigay ko sa iyo ang araw, tala, at buwan, ay perahin mo nalang, i-gcast mo nalang yan. Hindi ka pa malulugin. Okay. So, class suit. Napakarami ng mga complainants. Hindi na kanya accommodate ng korte. Pare-pareho naman yung kanilang interest. Pare-pareho sila naloko nitong istapador eh. So, anong gagawin? Mag-coin uh, mag ka lang representative in a class suit. Di ba? The parties being in the class suit are sufficiently numerous or representative of the class that can fully protect the interest of all concerned. Sometimes the case is smooth and academic or walang compliance with the other requisites of judicial review, but if it is of transcendental importance to the public, the court may take cognizance and resolve the case. Ito yung kaso ng Boracay. Hindi Boracay mansion na, kundi yung pagpapasara ng Boracay. Sabi ng korte, uh, matters raised in this case involve on one hand possible violation of the Constitution and on the other the need to rehabilitate the country's prime tourist destination. Diba? And also, when the court decides a case, it is considering adjudicative pragmatism. Ano yung pragmatism? Practicality. Diba? Titignan mo ano ang epekto nito. Kapag ka ba ito diniklara namin unconstitutional, what will happen? If we declare ito be constitutional, ano ang epekto sa civil liberties? So you call that adjudicative pragmatism. Because every law, ha? Eh, Huwag kukunin yung librong yan. Nakita ko lang yan. Every status is presumed valid. That's a presumption of constitutionality. Kasi dumaan yan doon sa proseso ng three readings on both chambers and then ni-review ng presidente before he signs it. So presumed constitutional. In order to declare it to be unconstitutional, you need the majority vote of all the members of the court. Meaning you need the vote of at least eight justices of the Supreme Court to overturn the presumption of constitutionality. Not less than eight. Okay? Now, the court also exercises the so-called doctrine of purposeful hesitation. Ano ba yung purposeful hesitation? Na maghinay-hinay ka, huwag ka masyadong padalos-dalos. Di ba? Haze makes waste. Kaya huwag kayo masyado nagmamadali. Okay? Yung mga delays na yan, uh, take them on the positive light na binibigyan kayo ng chance para mag-aral pa. So before the court declares a law or any ordinance to be unconstitutional, it would somehow hesitate muna. Bakit? Eh kasi, sinabi ko nga sa inyo, napaka-tedious ng dinaanan. Three readings done on, done on separate days by both chambers and then isinabmit sa presidente, inaral ng presidente, assuming inaral niya, pinirmahan niya. So dinala sa Korte Suprema, bigla mo na dineklarang unconstitutional. Okay? Why? 
if the, the law is declared unconstitutional, it confers no rights. It imposes no duties, affords no protection. It creates no office. It is inoperative as if it had not been passed at all. In other words, it is a total nullity. That was the traditional view. Na parang wala. Kasi unconstitutional siya. But what happens to those acts that were already performed pursuant to that law when it was still not yet declared unconstitutional? So darating dyan yung doctrine of operative facts. That is the modern view. That when the law is declared to be unconstitutional, the acts performed, the office created prior to its declaration of unconstitutionality will no longer be dis uh, disturbed. They are presumed to be valid because at the time of their action, the law was still valid. Okay? There are two kinds of members in the Judicial and Bar Council. Diba? At ang Judicial and Bar Council, yan ang alam nyo, function yan. Namimili at nagre-recommenda sa presidente ng mga appointees doon sa Judiciary and the Ombudsman. There are two kinds of members. The regular members appointed by the president for a term of uh, four years with the recommendation or appoint or with the confirmation of the commission on appointment. The ex officio members, sino yon? Yung chief justice, yung secretary of justice, and a representative of Congress. Before, there were two members of Congress sitting there. One senator and one congressman, one member of the House. Why? Kasi there are two chambers of Congress. But uh, Solicitor General Frank Chavez questioned it. Diba? Kaya sabi ng Korte Suprema, collegial body ito eh. Pag ginawa natin dalawa, yung miyembro ng Congress, it would result into eight members. What happens if there is a tie? Who will break the tie? Plus, semantics. A representative of the private sector, isa lang. A representative of the integrated bar, isa lang. A professor of law, isa lang. A retired justice of the court, isa lang. Eh bakit yung a representative of Congress, dalawa? Simply because it is two chamber. It has two chambers. Remember, under our system, Congress is just one. Nagkataon lang na meron siyang dalawang chambers. Diba? Ayan. Parang yun naniniwala sa Trinity, ano? Oh, there's only one God, but three persons now in one God. Well, I, I cannot explain that. <laughs> okay. So, Kowaranto is a proper remedy to remove and a justice who is not qualified. Okay? The Supreme Court have, con have concurrent jurisdiction with the CA and the RTC to issue extraordinary writs of Kowaranto. So, ang pagtanggal sa isang justice ng korte, hindi exclusive ang impeachment. Kowaranto can be also resorted to. But take note, albang Kowaranto, by what authority are you occupying the position? So it should be filed on behalf of the state by the Solicitor General. Take note of the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has the power to appoint. Eh? Mga members, uh, employees of the judiciary, members of the judiciary, hindi Supreme Court kasi presidente yan. Members of the uh, employees of the judiciary in accordance with the civil service law. The Supreme Court also has the power of administrative supervision over all courts in the country. Okay? Now, in the case of People versus Gakot, the Constitution provides that justices and judges are appointed by the President upon the recommendation of the JBC, but the President is not empowered by the Constitution to discipline or remove judges and justices. Neither can the Ombudsman be given jurisdiction over judges. It is only the Supreme Court through the Office of the Court of uh, Office of the Court Administrator who may uh, investigate and discipline judges and justices of the lower court. The Supreme Court has rulemaking power, okay? and in the case of People versus Mateo, procedural matters first and foremost fall more squarely within the rulemaking prerogative of the Supreme Court than the lawmaking power of Congress. Okay? And the Supreme Court under the Constitution enjoys fiscal autonomy. Meaning, <laughs> paano si Pau? E fiscal ito. Appropriation for the judiciary may not be reduced by the legislature below the amount appropriated for the previous year. 
So kaya good as approved kapag ka nag-submit ang judiciary ng kanyang budget, hindi naman automatic. May hearing pa rin naman yan. Kaya lang hindi pwedeng ibaba lower than the previous budget. The budget for the previous year. Okay? So, if there are officers who are negligent of their duties at hindi members ng judiciary, you go to the ombudsman, but ombudsman has no jurisdiction over judges. Okay? Now, um, the Supreme Court in the case of Ichigaray or Secretary of Justice says that the control, the power to control the execution of the decision of the court is an essential aspect of jurisdiction. Hindi pwede makialam dyan ang other branches of the government. Okay? So, ngayon, puntahan natin yung amendments or revision. Hindi end, ano? Amendments or revision. Any amendment to or revision of this constitution may be proposed by Congress or Constitutional Convention. Now, what about amendments? Amendment refers to the addition or change ha? na piecemeal. Okay? Kunti lang. Hindi marami. Pero sa revision refers to the complete overhauling of the constitution. So how do we know whether the proposal constitutes amendment or revision? In the case of Lambino versus Comelec, the Supreme Court presented two tests. One is the quantitative test. The more proposed changes are there, the more it will become revision. The less proposed changes, amendment. Okay? On the other hand, the qualitative test does not refer to the number of provisions to be replaced or changed. Rather, it refers to to the overall effect or impact of the proposed changes on the constitution or the system of government. That's why in that case, the example given was, look at Article 2, Section 1. The Philippines is democratic and republican state. Assuming we change democratic, republican into monarchical, the Philippines is a monarchical state. What does it give you? Is it an amendment or revision? Basically, that's revision. Kasi magiging monarchical ka. That is a change of system in the government. Okay? Now, what about stages? There are two stages in amendments or revision. Proposal and eventually ratification. So in proposal, there are three. Okay? One by Congress itself. Paano yung Congress itself? Hindi ginamit yung salitang Constituent Assembly ng Constitution. But it is widely known as Constituent Assembly. When Congress, by a vote of three-fourths of all its members, amend the Constitution or revise the Constitution. The problem here is, the voting was not provided for. Is it three-fourths of the Senate and three-fourths of the House or three-fourths of the entire Congress? Diba? Why? Eh kasi nga, I was told, no? no? Nabasa ko, na ito ay kinopia, with all due respect to the framers, ano, sa 1973 Constitution. And remember, the 1973 Constitution provided for a unicameral batasang pambansa. Now, during the voting, the members of the Constitutional Commission of Cory Aquino decided to have two chambers in our Congress. So, hindi na yata naihabol ito. So kaya, if Congress wants to be a constituent body to amend the Constitution, it has to go to the Supreme Court and ask the court how the voting should be done. Is it separate or joint? Because the Constitution tells you when it wants a separate or joint voting. In the Declaration of Martial Law, joint voting dyan ang Congress majority vote of all the members. Pero kapag ka nag-appoint ang acting president ng vice president, eh, separate voting as what we have learned earlier. So here, we cannot just set aside at sabihin natin na yan ay separate or joint. There must be a, con uh, a Supreme Court interpretation. Now, Constitutional Convention and People's Initiative. And then you have ratification. Okay? What about um, 
a, a constitutional convention. There are two ways to call for a convention. Number one, two-thirds vote of all the members of Congress. Again, pupunta tayo sa question, is it joint voting or separate voting? So assuming it, be, uh, it was resolved by the court, how the voting should be done, then Congress, dahil nakakuha siya ng two-thirds, will enact a law calling for a convention. Describing how the convention should be constituted, whether the delegates will be appointed or elected. Huh? So nandun niya, pero sanay tayo na ang mga convention natin, the delegates were elected by the people. Or, hindi sila nakakuha naman ng two-thirds, pero majority lang. So ang gagawin ng kongreso, it will create a law, huh? dahil majority lang eh. Again, babalik tayo sa question, is it joint or separate voting? So ang gagawin dyan, assuming it was resolved by the court, dahil majority lang, it will be a tedious process. Congress will create a law to ask the people in a plebiscite, do you want to have a constitutional convention? Pag nanalo yung no, ay ditapos na. It dies a natural death. Pag nanalo yung yes, Congress will then enact a law that would create a convention for the purpose of amending or revising the constitution. Now, the people may also propose amendments, but not revision. Because under Section 2 of Article 17, amendments to this constitution, it did not mention revision. That's why it is crucial to determine whether the proposal is revision or amendment, because if it is revision, people's initiative cannot be done. Okay? That's the ruling in Santiago versus Comelec and Lambino versus Comelec. Okay, so people's initiative is limited to amendments. Now, puntahan natin yung Santiago versus Comelec. Way back 1997, when Ramos was still in Malacanang, there were also moves to amend the Constitution. Alam nyo, magmula kay Ramos hanggang kay Duterte, pwera lang si Binigno Aquino, eh gusto lahat yan amyandahan ang Constitution. But none of them succeeded. Dahil nga, tedious yung process eh. We have a rigid constitution. Eh. So, during the time of uh, Ramos, President Ramos, ano, there were moves to amend the constitution by a people's initiative. Yung PIRMA, People's Initiative Reform and Modernization, etc. Then, the signatures were submitted to the Comelic for verification. There was a law, Republic Act 6735, na pinagbabatayan na yun daw yung implementing rules to uh, set into motion people's initiative to amend the constitution or revise the constitution. But Miriam Santiago and several others filed a petition before the Supreme Court. And on March 19, 1997, the Supreme Court ruled that the enabling law to implement people's initiative to amend the constitution is incomplete. That was Republic Act 6735. That is why when it happened again during the time of Gloria Arroyo, According to Lambino versus Comelec, there is no need to revisit the ruling in Santiago versus Comelec because after the lapse of nine years, Congress did not amend Republic Act 6735. So it remained incomplete as an enabling law to implement people's initiative to amend the Constitution. Walang ginawa ang gobyerno sa 6735. But of course, there were dissenting opinions, particularly one of Justice Puno, but the majority said it is still inadequate, so there's no need to revisit the Santiago ruling. Then, ratification. Okay? So not earlier than 60 days, not later than 90 days. Kung ka mag-schedule niyan. Eh? After the approval. Sino ga-approve? Ang Presidente. Now, if you want to appeal the decisions of the Civil Service Commission, you go to the Court of Appeals via Rule 43. Wag magmadali na gamitin ang Rule 65. Because Rule 65, petition for certiorari, can only be used if there's no plain, available, or speedy remedy under the ordinary course of law. Eh, meron kang Rule 43. Gamitin mo muna yan. Wag ka munang mag-65. Appeals from the decisions of Comelec and COA, Rule 64. Okay? Under uh, Rule 64 yan. Ha? Hindi po pwede ang Rule 65. Petition is designed to correct only errors of jurisdiction, not errors of judgment. You have to do that within 30 days from notice of judgment. Maliwanag. Okay? 
However, tindandaan niyo sa COMELEC, doon ka muna sa division. Denial by the division, you appeal to the COMELEC and bank. From the COMELEC and bank, you go to the Supreme Court by a petition for certiorari under Rule 64. Ganon din sa COA, Rule 64 din ang gagamitin. However, in the case of Diocese of Bacolod versus COMELEC, Rule 64 is not the exclusive remedy for all acts of the COMELEC. Pwede nyo rin gamitin ang Rule 65. Kaya like ko sinasabi sa mga estudyante ko, sinasabi ko na rin sa inyo, kung merong general rule, yun muna ang gamitin nyo. Huwag na kayo dun sa exception kasi you, have, you still have to justify why you are using the exception and not the general rule. So 64 ang sinabi, pag 64 ka. Pag wala na lang talaga, ha? your back is against the wall, no other remedies, saka ka na mag 65. That's the catch-all provision. Okay? And take note of the duty of COA. Hindi dapat inaaway ang COA kapag ka nag-issue ng mga notice of disallowance. Kasi ang COA ang tagabantay ng ating pondo. Hindi nyo pera yan, pera nating lahat yan. Lahat ng taxpayers may share dyan. Okay? Because public office is a public trust. Diba? Nasa gobyerno ka dahil pinagtitiwalaan ka. Kaya nga, pag nag-distribute ng condom ang Department of Health, nagagalit yung iba. Pero remember always that public office is a public trust. Okay? And public office is invested as a public officer to the individual. The individual invested in public office is a public officer. At kapag kang public officer nag-misbehave, tatanggalin siya. Kung siya ay may immunity, impeach natin siya. <laughs> diba? So impeachment proceeding is not a single act. It is a complexus of acts according to the court. The beginning of or the initiation is the filing of the complaint. And then it is referred to the Committee on Justice. The middle consists of those deliberative moments. So yan, deliberation na sa Committee on Justice. Para ma-formulate yung articles of impeachment. And the end is transmittal to the Senate. That's why it is crucial to determine when is the initiation. Because you cannot initiate more than one impeachment against the same official in a period of one year. So Francisco versus House of Representatives, the initiation takes place by the act of filing of the impeachment complaint and referral. Kasi pwede ang private person, mag individual, mag-file ang impeachment complaint. But it needs there, uh, to be sponsored by at least one member of the House. Pag wala, ay di, die, it will die a natural death. Okay, so ni-refer sa Committee on Justice, yan na ang initiation. So one year from, within one year from the time, no other impeachment complaint can be filed against the same official. Okay, at ang ombudsman ay may duty na i-investigahan at i-prosecute yung mga official within the jurisdiction of the ombudsman under Republic Act 6770. If you were charged by the ombudsman, in a criminal case, you appeal to the court, Supreme Court, not the Court of Appeals, by a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. You do not go to the Court of Appeals. Eh? Ito ay for criminal or non-administrative cases. Certiorari by a rule, uh, petition for certiorari under Rule 65. Now, in the case of Buda de um, uh, Ombudsman versus Buda de Ventura, Pagka naman ito ay administrative, okay? Suspensions, etc. Not criminal, you go to the Court of Appeals. Okay? By a petition for review on certiorari. Okay? Uh, rule 43, but not to the Supreme Court. Kaya idiniklarang unconstitutional yung Section 27 of Republic Act 6770. Eh? So court, ganito, no? summarize natin. Pag criminal, Supreme Court Rule 65. Pag administrative, Court of Appeals Rule 43. Now, in the case of Ombudsman versus Paco Ribot, the Ombudsman's decision imposing the penalty of suspension for one year is immediately executory even if you are still appealing the ruling to the Court of Appeals. Okay? It cannot be stayed even if you have appealed the ruling of the Ombudsman to the Court of Appeals, immediately executorian, pending appeal. So, under the Regalian Doctrine, ha, konti na lang, don't worry. 
The Regalian Doctrine says that, and then Article 12, that all lands of the public domain belong to the state, which is the source of any asserted right to ownership of the land. Ang may-ari ng lahat ng lupain ay ang, ang Estado. So all lands not appearing to be clearly with private ownership are presumed to be owned by the state. Accordingly, all public lands not shown to have been reclassified or released as alienable agricultural land or alienated to a private person by the state remain part of the inalienable public domain. That was the case of Republic versus the heirs of sin. Yung mga kamag-anak ito ni Cardinal Sin sa Aklan. The burden of proof in overcoming the presumption of state ownership belongs to the one claiming ownership. Okay? Kasi ang presumption sa estado yan. Now, for legislative franchise, katulad ng mga radio and TV, tulad ng sa ABS-CBN, abay kailangan po natin dito ng congressional or legislative franchise. Kaya nagtataka yung iba, bakit yung prangkisa ng jeepney doon lang sa LTFRB? Bakit yung may franchise na sa NTC, meron pang franchise sa Kongreso? Ayun po kasi yung sinasabi ng ating konstitusyon. Reiterating the old Radio Control Act of 1931. Diba? Kaya sabi ng Korte Suprema, kung magtatayo ka ng television, radio station, mga communication facilities, kailangan mo ng congressional franchise at iba pa yung certificate of public convenience to be issued by the NTC. That's an additional requirement. Kaya hindi eh, nakuha ng franchise ang ABS-CBN, eh, ay dinatuwa ang maraming misis kasi yung pala ambisyon ng kalimang mister. Alak, babae, sugal, cabaret bar, nightclub. <laughs> Naiwan na yung GMA. Konti na lang kami. Gentleman all the time. Okay? So, puntahan naman natin yung environmental protection. That is guaranteed under our Constitution, Section 16 of Article 2, that the state shall protect and advance the right of the people to a balanced and helpful ecology in accord with the rhythm and harmony of the night. Ah, nature. That's why, napakadumi ng Manila Bay. Walang gustong maligo. Meron naman naliligo, ano? Kaya tinamba ka ng dolomite para kunyari ay puti. Kasama ba yan dyan? In the case of MMDA versus concerned residents of Manila Bay, eh, inutusan ng MMDA and several others, napakarami, pati yung Coast Guard, pati yung Philippine Navy, pati yung Philippine Ports Authority, and so on, to clean up Manila Bay. At dito inisyo yung writ of continuing mandamos. Why? Tuloy-tuloy na inuutusan kayo. Mag-report kayo quarterly kung ano na ang clean-up measures na ginawa nyo. Okay? Kasama ba dyan yung... Ah, kasama ang DNR doon sa inutusang maglinis. Kaya ang ginawa ng DNR, oh, para maputi, lagyan natin. <laughs> para pininturahan. Ano? <laughs> eh, kaya lang, pagka, pagka umulan at uh, bumagyo, nako, wala na. Itim na uli yan. Okay. So, puntahan naman natin yung last. International law. That's a branch of public law that regulates the relations of sovereigns, our states, and other entities na merong international personal. It was first used by Jeremy Bentham and it's interchangeably used with the term laws of nations. Now, why is there international law? Bakit? Ano bang basihan nito? The law of nature school. Whether you are an individual or a state, you have to adhere to the principle of right and wrong and dealing with each other. Why? Ang sabi naman po ni Thomas Aquinas, the first rule of morality is to do good and avoid evil. Kung delikado mga abogado dito, pag lahat ng tao sumunod dyan, ano? wala nang makakasuhan eh. Kasi everyone is doing what is good and avoiding what is evil. Okay? Kaya lang, hindi lahat kinagawa yan. Pangalawa ay yung positive school. That the binding force of international law is the agreement by the parties. When you enter into a treaty, you are binding yourself Not for subordination, but for coordination. When we became a member of the UN, we did not subordinate ourselves to the UN, but we coordinated with the members and other uh, organs of the UN. And when you enter into a treaty, you adhere thereto in good faith. Pacta sun serbanda. Ano sabi dyan? Promises must be kept. Huwag kang paasa kasi may nagkaka-UTI. So if you enter into a treaty, respect the treaty in good faith. Comply. Masaya ang example natin. The Republic of the Philippines and People's Republic of China, no? both signed the UNCLOS Convention on December 10, 1982. 
in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Okay? South America. Kasama diyan sa commitment nila at ni-ratify ang kanilang mga processes. Kasama sa commitment diyan igalang ang territorial sea, ang contiguous zone, ang exclusive economic zone. At saka yung other maritime domains including um oh yan. Ngayon, ang problema, yung exclusive economic zone extends up to 200 nautical miles only from the low water mark from your baseline. Okay? So we are respecting that. Kaya nga, yung Scarborough Shoal at yung Spratlys ay kiniklaim natin kasi nasa loob sila ng ating exclusive economic zone. Itong uh, Scarborough Shoal at Spratlys ay outside the 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone of China. So what is the business of China and Scarborough Shoal and Spratlys? Ay labas na pala sa kanyang exclusive economic zone. Gusto ng China joint exploration. But under the UNCLOS Convention, states can enter into joint exploration if there are overlapping territorial waters. There is no overlapping territorial water between the Philippines and China. So China cannot insist on joint exploration. China must leave the Spratlys and Scarborough Shoal. Why? It has committed itself to the UNCLOS. Good faith. Bad faith ng China. Binubuli tayo at nagpapabuli tayo. Ngayon, another basis why there is international law is a compromise. Diba? You enter into a treaty, you still observe good faith in adhering there too. Oh, eh, yung mga bully ay yung mag-adhere. Diba? That's the eclectic or Grotian school. Galing kay Hugo Grotius, the father of international law. But do not ask me who the mother is. I really do not know. <laughs> Yung father lang kilala ko. <laughs> Ngayon, puntahan natin. Why do we apply international law in local jurisdiction? Because of the doctrine of incorporation. Diba? Treaties are adopted as part of the municipal law. It is the constitution in Article 2, Section 2, which says that the Philippines renounces war as an instrument of national policy, adopts a general principle, accepted principles of international law as part of the law of the land. In fact, that phrase is derived from the Kellogg-Bryan Pact of 1928. Okay? It was a treaty between the U.S. and France, facilitated by Frank Kellogg at saka itong si Aristide Bryan ng France, foreign minister. Kula alam ko mag-anak ni Kobe. Ha? 1928. Ang sabi dyan, international agreement in which signatory states, yung pumirma dito, tayo hindi tayo pumirma dyan. Kasi we were not yet a state at the time, we were still a colony of the U.S. Ha? promised not to use war to resolve disputes of whatever nature or whatever origin they may be which may arise among them. Hindi nila gagamitin ang gyera. Okay, that's why we renounce war. But the war that we renounce was a war of aggression. We did not renounce war for self-defense. That is a basic right. Okay? However, in case of conflict, Between the international law and the constitution, even under the doctrine of incorporation, the constitution must prevail over the conflicting international law. Because an international law is in the nature of a soft law. Bakit siya soft law? Hindi mo siya may papatupad dahil walang penalties locally. Yung local law is hard law. That's why you need to convert the soft law into hard law. Hala. <laughs> diba? Matigasin mo. Okay, paano? I-convert mo. That's now the doctrine of transformation. An international law can only be implemented locally if you have a counterpart measure under your system you legislated to implement an international law. That's why not so long ago, we joined the World Trade Organization. Ang China hindi sumali. Kaya walang protection ng copyright sa China. Why? I do not know. So under the protocols of the World Trade Organization is the protection of intellectual creation, intellectual property, referring to patents, trade names, trademarks, and copyright. So we now have Republic Act 8293 that we can penalize those who infringe on copyright, trade names, trademark, and patent. Okay? Okay. So kaya itong mga librong ito ay copyrighted po yan. 
but following Republic Act 8293 as amended. Okay? The publishers, the publisher is Rex Bookstore. Kasi para sa akin, there's no, there are only two publishers in the country. Rex Bookstore and others. Okay? <laughs> Ayan. Kaya lang. Ito. Sponsor pala natin ang Rex Bookstore. There are other books there na hindi Rex. Ano? You can go to this YouTube channel for other lectures. And remember this before we end. Particularly those who are planning to give up right now. Many of life's failures are experienced by people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Do not give up. Choose to be happy. Okay? Sabi ni Maya Angelo, do not prioritize someone if to him you are just an option. I-prioritize nyo lang yung tao na priority rin kayo. At para hindi kayo masaktan, iwasan nyo yung mga tao na ang tingin sa inyo ay hagdanan. Bakit hagdanan? Kasi napapansin ka lang pag hindi available ang elevator. Iwasan nyo rin. Yung mga taong parang Paris will. Bakit? Kala mo pinapaligaya kayo. Wala, pinapaikot-ikot ka lang. At sa dulo, layuan nyo ang mga taong parang buwan. Bakit? Sinasamahan ka sa gabi, pero iiwanan ka rin yan pagdating ng araw. So maraming salamat and good luck to all of you. See you during the outtaking.